Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us. Abraham S. Raja is my name. The kingdom in you is the show that you're watching. And I'm trusting and believing God that what we're giving you and dishing out to you here is going to be a great blessing to you. We're already receiving some testimonies. Uh, some people saying that your show is touching and so forth, so forth. So we just trust God that uh, he's going to continue to do that and use us as a ministry uh, to bring to you this necessary word which is so vital. We are dealing with the subject of the intercession ministry, the intercession ministry. And we are now on, I believe, part seven, part seven, which is the second last one, uh, part seven of our intercession ministry teachings. And uh, you need to get into the book, uh, which, you can have, uh, which you can Google. It should be there shortly, available on the internet. You can get into YouTube, you can watch our videos there, and uh, just subscribe to our channel, and uh, email us, let us know what the show is doing for you, in Jesus' name. So I want you to stay tuned, because I'm going to be believing God for you, praying for you, releasing my faith for you, and trusting God to do something that only He can do in your life. But in the meantime, I want you to get your pen, your paper, I want you to get your concentration levels up. I want you to get into God's Word, get your Bibles, it's the most important thing. When we get into God's Word, uh, there's no telling what God can do, which direction He can take us, but we can be sure that whatever it is, it's a direction that is taking us up and into new levels of our lives and seasons. Amen. So I'm speaking to all my prayer warriors out there. I'm speaking to pastors and leaders who want to see themselves having a more structured intercession ministry. I'm speaking to normal Christians out there who sometimes they don't even know that God has called them into intercession. So one of the ways that you can begin to find this out is if you go to uh, chapter one, actually uh, part one of the teaching, you begin to find out, how do I know if God has called me into the ministry of intercession? You're saying, Pastor, uh, Apostle Abraham, I really want God to use me, but... I'm not sure if God has called me into this intercession thing. Today we're dealing with a very important subject matter called moving from prayer to spiritual warfare or from prayer to spiritual warfare. Now, I'm sure you've heard this. Uh, if you're a Christian, you've heard this thing called spiritual warfare. Right? You know, people say, I'm doing warfare. Um, what does it mean to do warfare? And how is it different from normal prayer and from normal intercession? Well, let me begin by saying this. In reality, any form of spiritual warfare is still a form of prayer. Because remember we said prayer in its simplest, communicate, in its simplest meaning is to communicate with God. Um, however, spiritual warfare focuses much, very much, on praying against Satan and his demons. So when we go into warfare, really our battle is against Satan necessarily. We've identified him as the culprit. We've said, you're the one that has taken our land, our territory, our, our positions. Uh, you're the one that's taken our influence, and we want it back. We want it back in Jesus' name. And unlike other form prayer forms like supplications, meditations, and journaling, the form of prayer, as we will learn, is, is, is one that carries with it a tone of spiritual violence. You know, there's a tone of battle when you go into spiritual warfare. Okay, now let me just say that after saying, um, after saying this, is because spiritual warfare is a real battle. In other words, you know, it's not just because we're imagining it, it's just not because uh, we feel like it, but there's actually something that is happening in the atmosphere. Let me give you an example. You can hear my voice right now. You can see my lips moving. You know I am talking. But scientists can actually detect that there are waves of sound moving through the cameras, moving through your speakers. You can't see them, but doesn't mean they're not there. The fact that you can hear me is evidence that sound waves exist. What does that mean? The fact that you can see victories, trials in your life shows you that spiritual warfare is a real battle. All right. Praise the Lord. Now. How do we know this from the Bible? The Bible tells us time and time again that we as believers, 
we as Christians are involved in all manner of spiritual warfare. I'm going to quote a few scriptures here. Uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3 to 4 says this, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Notice this, no one engaged in warfare. The Bible speaks about Timothy being engaged in warfare. Now we know that that is every Christian's uh, calling and mandate. Ephesians 6, 12 says, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. So what are we fighting against? We are fighting against demons and devils that are trying to control our environment, our atmosphere, our people, our things, everything. All right. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 says, we do not war. You see all these words, warfare, fighting, uh, weapons, all of these things are clear indications that you and I are in a definite battle that we need to overcome, all right? Now here's something I want to send out as, a, as, a, as perhaps as a warning or as a caution to those that will engage in spiritual warfare. Now let's just say for example I'm praying for my mother to be healed of cancer. Uh, if I pray a normal prayer of faith, I'll say, Father, I thank you that by, her st by your stripes she is healed. And I lay my hands on her, God, and you say, whoever I lay my hands on shall be. Right? That's a normal prayer of faith. A spiritual warfare prayer would change its tone. We'll begin to say, you devil of cancer, you spirit of infirmity. Now, notice these are also scriptures. You spirit raised from the curse, operating in the laws of sin and death. I come again, I bind your works. So be careful when we deal with things like that and just moving from prayer of warfare uh, to prayer. Uh, so here's what we're saying. We're saying when you approach spiritual warfare prayers, you have to be a bit more careful. Why? Because they are heavily opposed. Because you are literally saying out and calling out Satan to battle. You know, you're not just calling out the elements that have come through the fall. You're calling out Satan himself. And uh, he's not going to like his authority to be challenged, but he has no choice. But here's the point. There's a place in Acts chapter 6, uh, verse 6 to 10, where Paul was forbidden by God to enter a certain area. Now, even though God could have easily sent Paul there and given him victory, God was showing us in that scripture, I believe, that even he is responsible for determining the times and the places that we are to go in. For example, prayers that go against Satanists, witches, uh, people experienced in the dark forces, uh, people that have uh, experienced themselves in, in, in manipulating demons. You've got to be careful when you go into such things. Now, again, you must not f develop fascination for witches and Satanists and so forth and so forth because our God we serve is high in authority. But you've got to see them with the kind of a healthy respect now, when I say respect, people think perhaps it's fear. No, respect simply means you are recognizing what is on that person and you approach it from a God-centered view because we've had many people praying against warlocks and wizards and witches and because of that, not prepared enough, they began to die and suffer all kinds of things. Okay? Now, here's something that you should be aware of. Sometimes when we look at the world, we're beginning to see, you know, this, like we're losing the battle. The crime raids, we begin to see, uh, you know, all kinds of trials coming our way, militant groups rising, crime raids, poverty levels rising. But let me tell you something. The Bible also speaks about that came a time when David used to question, say, why does it seem like the wicked are prospering? Now, what am I saying to you? It may seem like the world is winning. It may seem uh, like the church is losing. But I want to remind you that warfare is a fight for territory. Okay, so most of the plans, most of the whatever we need, the resources are in the enemy's hands. But we got to stand up and fight. We got to stand up and fight. Now, why does the Bible speak about territory? And why does it say about Satan having our territory? Now, the Bible says the devil has a kingdom in Matthew 12, 26. Now, that word kingdom simply means a king's domain or wherever a king exercises rulership or authority. What am I saying to you? Domain suggests that there's a place that the devil controls. So warfare is really a battle to regain the territory that the devil has stolen. 
We're saying the job of intercessors is to dispossess the enemy and to plunder him by force so that he can release whatever belongs to us. Let me just give you two examples of scriptures uh, that tell us. Daniel 10 tell us that, told us that the demons controlled a place called the Prince of Persia or the region of Persia. The Bible speaks about in Acts chapter 19, there was a demon named Artemis or Diana that controlled the city of Ephesus. So we literally have to go and dispossess Satan. Jesus has done all that he could, but we literally have to go and dispossess Satan. And the more territory we control as a church, that's the more people can be saved, delivered, equipped, and financially blessed. So intercessors, you got to get out there and begin to release the things that God has in store for his people. Intercessors as prayer warriors who take it by force. Now, I have always believed and still believe that the Bible speaks about God raising up an army, an army that is going to literally challenge the armies of the enemy. These are Christians whom God, uh, you've, you probably found one of my teachings on YouTube on the army of the Lord. These are, these are some of the things that God has been speaking to me about. Now, for example, in any army, there are divisions. There's a division that'll take care of communication. There's a division that'll take care of training, a division that'll take care of snipers. There are also special ops in, our, in any army. These are people that have gone the extra mile to train themselves in certain techniques. And when they are, for example, delicate uh, operations, I remember, uh, for example, when it was time to take down Osama bin Laden, uh, the Americans uh, brought their special ops. They brought their best out. So what I'm saying to you, intercessors as well are people that God is going to specially train in the area of prayer for them to begin to be used by God. Um, so just remember that while we are on this earth, we're going to be in a continuous battle. And we are always going to be able, by the power and the ministry of intercession, to take the battle to the devil. And prayer is one of the ways that we do this as intercessors. You know, there are a lot of scriptures that speak about the end time transfer of wealth, which is God, God using the resources of this world, taking them out of the enemy's hands into the hands of, of God's people. This is going to be done one of the ways through prayer. We have to pray, we have to intercede, and we have to go against the enemy in warfare and say, look at what God says in Isaiah 45, 2-3. He says, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight, I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. You remember the Bible says in, in, in Matthew, Jesus said the enemy has gates. Hades has gates. Now listen to this. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden treasures or riches of secret places. What's God saying? He says, I'm about to dispossess the enemy. And God says, I need my intercessors to be on board. I want to speak to you also about God being a God of war. You know, sometimes we just, you know, we just picture Jesus as, you know, some white uh, man moving around in, uh, in some sandals and, you know, just, just being beaten around and being bullied around. But no, Jesus is a man of war, okay? That persona you see in the Jesus movies, that is, was him being a lamb. But the Bible says that he's also a lion. There are so many scriptures I have found in the book, the inter, in my book, the Intercession Ministry Manual, that speak about the God being the God of war. Exodus 15.3, for example, says, The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. He's a man of war. God does not back down for a fight. God is looking for a fight. God is looking for people who will go to fight for him and he'll get involved. Read out through the New Old Testament. The only time those people stop fighting uh, when God's, the only time those people stop receiving victories is when God stopped getting involved because they stopped going into battle. So there's so many other scriptures. The Bible speaks about the Lord himself will fight on your behalf in Deuteronomy 1.30. The Bible says in Joshua, for the Lord fought for Israel. He says in Nehemiah, uh, God will fight for us. The Bible says in Psalms that God will fight against those who fight against you. He says uh, he will raise a cry like a man of war in Isaiah and he will prevail against his enemies. In the book of Revelations, the Bible speaks about God coming as a man of war to destroy all the enemies. Amen, amen, amen. So God's not backing down. God wants to get involved in your battle, in your fight as you learn these principles of spiritual warfare. We'll be right back when we speak about the language of warfare. 
in just a minute. See you just now. Praise the Lord, we're back and we're talking about spiritual warfare. We're talking about how do you move from prayer to spiritual warfare. And really what we've been talking about uh, before we went on break is expressing God, being a man of war, and, and, and God wanting us to also get involved in battle. But we did say that before you gain, um, before you enter into spiritual warfare, you just have to be very, very careful uh, because... Uh, it's a delicate subject, you know. We said spiritual warfare is when you now begin to call out Satan directly, or the demons responsible for whatever situation you believe in that you're in, and and and, and you basically openly challenge them. You basically openly challenge them. So we are now speaking about the language of warfare. You know, we spoke about the fact that warfare has a certain tone, has a certain violence, a spiritual violence, not a physical violence, a spiritual violence. Um, now, when we speak about warfare language, you must remember prayer is all about communication. Communication is about language, and language is simply words, right? So intercessors have to learn to use their words and to release powerful prayers. Now, I must warn you, even though uh, we spoke about errors of intercession as well, but you must know that the power is not necessarily in the words. The power is in the revelation behind the words that is based on the word of God. Because God still backs up his word, not our words. He will back up our words when they are aligned to his word. All right? So we got to remember that warfare language, though, is a kind of aggressive tone and a kind of a, um, a violent tone. And these are some of the words and the phrases that we can use during intercession. Uh, warfare, warfare intercession. We can start saying, we reverse, glory to God. What is to reverse? To reverse is to change the direction and the order of something. In other words, if something was going in this way, we reverse it, glory to God. Uh, the Bible says that um, when the Bible says that you, you thought evil against me, but God turned it into good in Genesis 50 verse 22. In other words, God reversed it. When we reverse, we're saying, no, Satan. This is the direction that this thing should take. Number two, we destroy, you know. The Bible says uh, that we can destroy or throw down in Jeremiah. What is to destroy? It's to ruin, to wreck, to bring to nothing, to demolish. When we say we destroy your works, devil, we demolish your works. We are bringing your works to nothing in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. We dismantle. What is to dismantle? It's to disassemble, to tear down. You know, to, to bring an end to, to strip off. The Bible says that Colossians 2.12, he's having stripped the principalities and the authorities. He made a show of them when he triumphed over them in the cross. Praise the Lord. We dismantle. These are languages we can use as intercessors when we're in warfare. We enforce, meaning we compel obedience, Satan. We restrict. What does that mean? It means that we let you know this is the place that you are restricted to. You cannot move beyond this point. For example, today we restrict the one who moves like a roaring lion. He shall not come near our business interests in Jesus' name. You now remember restrict comes also from that scripture. It says a thousand can fall at our side, ten thousand are right, but shall not come near. It's restricted at our left and right, but it cannot come near us in Psalm 91. In other words, we use, we put pressure on you, devil. This is the direction you will go. The Bible says that when you resist the devil, he will flee. 
In other words, he's got a direction to flee to. We dissociate ourselves from foreign gods. You know, we cut ourselves from our people we've met, we've, we've had ties with relationally, uh, whatever, demonically, you know. We can stand, we stand, we stand fast. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, having done all to stand, stand. Amen. We're able to withstand in the even day. Glory to God. So we can say that in this battle concerning our families, we stand on God's promises and we declare, Satan, you will not come near my marriage. You will not come near my family, my children, and so on, so on. We establish. The Bible says that we've been given right to put, to plant, to establish. We can put laws into effect in the realm of the spirit. We can forbid Satan and his demons. We can come against him. We can prohibit in Jesus' name. We can prevent him. The Bible says in Matthew 18, 18, whatever you forbid or declare improper, unlawful on the earth, it'll be forbidden in heaven. Whatever we permit will be permitted. <laughs> That's powerful, right? Lord, we forbid the movement of Satan in our ministry in Jesus' name. We forbid it among our people. Uh, causing divisions. We engage you, Satan. The Bible says that God will contend with those who contend against us. We enter into battle with you, devil. We contend with you. We're not going to let you steal our children to drugs. Or we're not going to let you uh, take our children uh, through this or that. We contend with you. We take you to war and we win in Jesus' name. Satan, we resist you. In other words, we fight back we push back against the things you're trying to do. The Bible says resist the devil. We resist the, for example, Satan, we resist the temptation to give up, to quit. Satan, we resist the temptation to, do, uh, to, to get drunk or to fornicate or whatever. We resist. Satan, we dethrone you. It's a powerful thing that we do as well. And uh, the Bible says that uh, many scriptures speak about God dethroning Satan. We oppose you, Satan. We condemn you. And, uh, and, and, and this is some of the things that we use in Jesus' name. The Bible says that every tongue arisen against us, we will condemn. So we can also turn scriptures into prayer. Okay, for example, if I say, God, thank you that every prison wall right now is being shaken to the ground. Uh, what is that? That is the example of the book of Acts when Peter was released. Uh, uh, in, no as well as the time when Paul and Silas were released. Father, we thank you that in the midst of the fire, we are receiving the fourth man to deliver us. You're turning the scriptures into warfare, our prayers that happen in the book of Daniel. Remember, I see the fourth man. There's something else so powerful as well called warfare, praise, and worship. What is warfare, praise, and worship? Warfare, praise, and worship simply means when you use singing, dancing, shouting, as instruments to bring God's power. God in the Bible speaks several times of music being used as an instrument to bring down the enemies of God. And it's still the same today. Uh, you know, over in Acts chapter 16, it's a very important one, when Paul and Silas sang, the Bible says they were singing hymns to God and the foundations of the prison were shaken and everyone's chains were loosed. In the Second Chronicles 20, the Bible says, Verse 22 says, as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the man of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who came against Judah, and they were rooted. Amen. The walls of Jericho fell down at a shout. A shout was a shout of praise at a trumpet. And uh, several other scriptures that you can find where God has used um, music as an important part of gaining victory for his people. You know, I want to let you know something. When you go into warfare, you got to have strategy. You got to be able to have the kind of strategy. Uh, you know, you don't just go into warfare for the sake of it. God will want to bring your enemies down with something specific. For example, Pharaoh was defeated with plagues. Jericho came down with a shout. Sodom came down with fire. Gideon, 300 men. Uh, if you read the Bible, David and, and most of the Israelite soldiers were given direction. No, attack them from this side, attack them from this side. Now, we don't go in a physical battle, we go in a spiritual battle. But what am I trying to say to you? Is that God can find methods 
and techniques that he will use. For example, God can deliver you through a 40-day fast. He can do it through a one-day fast, a seven-day fast. God can deliver you through an act of obedience uh, from your enemy. God can deliver you uh, through an all-night prayer. He can deliver you through a three-minute prayer. God can deliver you through 15 scriptures, but he can deliver you through five scriptures. So it's important for us to know that when we're in a battle, we're going to ask God and say, God, what is your strategy for me to win this battle? In what ways do you want me, God, to take over this battle? And God will say, okay, son, fast for this long. Okay, go into the word. Okay, and this is what we call warfare strategies. When God gets involved in your, in your battle and begins to show you those different techniques, you know, God can give you a victory through a dance, a shout, anything. So don't limit God in any way. And remember, it's not up to us to look for exciting methods. Sometimes just pure faith in the word and praying to him through supplication, saying, God, your word said one, two, three, may be enough before we get any other revelations, so to speak. So we've come to the end of part seven of our teaching. And uh, I want to make a cry out to you to receive Jesus as Lord of your life if you haven't. You know you should. If you backslid and you've given up on church, you've given up on pastors, just ask God to refresh you and renew you in Jesus' name. And Father, I just pray for people that are sick in their bodies, you will bring healing. People that are oppressed in their minds, you bring deliverance, God. People that are oppressed in finances, you bring breakthrough, God. In Jesus' name, I pray even the spirit of suicide as I see it is beginning to be released from some people. Be set free today. I do warfare, God. On behalf of your people, I deliver them right now as they stand in agreement with me from every form of witchcraft, every form of manipulation, every form of mental oppression in the name of Jesus Christ. Do it, God, in Jesus' name. God bless you, this Apostle Abraham, reminding you the kingdom is in you.